folks, AJ the CEO here, and in this video, I want to share with you something that's not really media ministry related, but it's something that I promised that I was going to show you when I figured out this whole scoreboard thing for Formation Sports. So, let's go. Folks, AJ the CEO here. This is your first time stopping by the channel. Thanks for stopping by and on this channel. We focus on tips, training, strategies, reviews, and bills to help modernize your media ministry. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. And if you like what we're doing here, consider becoming a patron or a YouTube member by clicking one of the links down below. Now, even though I normally focus on media ministries, um, streaming sports actually was birthed from the media ministry at my church. But more importantly than that, if you've been on my channel long enough, you know that I talk about that. But we do live streaming for a local high school, and one of my struggles has been how to capture the um, score. Now, I normally use an app called Live Score app that gives me a way to project and put everything on there. I've been trying to work with hooking it up to the scoreboard so I can actually pull data from the scoreboard and feed it into the app, which is an option, but... At the school, it does not work. So I was trying to figure out another way to do it, and I came across this app, which actually works with Live Score. So let me show you what it is. It is the Scoreboard OCR, <laughs> and pretty much OCR is uh, pretty much the same way your scanner works. How you put a piece of paper in it and it scans, it takes a picture of it, and then recognize it and converts it into text, numbers, number, numbers, numbers, and stuff like that. But this app actually does the same thing, which is really cool. So, real quick, I already have it installed, and I want to show you right behind me. I actually have a um, ESPN's um, is live does a live stream of nothing but a scoreboard. I guess that's a thing. But for me, it gives me a good example of how to test this thing out. So if we um, open up the app on our desktop here. Now, I'm using the ATEM Mini to record this, ATEM Mini Pro to record this, but I have um, my AJA UTAP as a second input hooked up to my um, Sony camcorder. So you need, there's multiple ways to do this, but I'm going to show you that's how I'm going to use this. So if we open the app up here, and let me drag it over here, and let's shrink it down a little bit. So it, I just need you to, to really get the concept of this. Just think of a scanner. So inside the app, you only got three options. We're going to select a capture. Um, you can take in a picture or a recording that you've done. But for me, I'm actually going to be using this live. Um, you have multiple capture options um you also have the aja utap which for whatever reason mine is not showing up then you have black magic devices i don't have one in here but i'm just going to use the capture device because that's how it's being detected and it's right here so if we select that you also can pick the resolution i am um, 1920 by 1080 frame rate i am doing 60 and then format is default. So if we just start capturing, you'll see down here, it's my camera pointed at my TV. So let me move it over here a little bit. As best as possible, you want to have a straight on shot. Um, so let's, and I'll bring up live score after this, but first let's jump over here to our um, choose output. And I'm going to do local host, and this is how I've already set it up to, for the live score, but I'll show you that. So this really isn't that important right now. But just know you have multiple options. You can output the data in XML, CSV, a text file, multiple um, different options. You got the TriCaster. You actually got vMix. Um, you can integrate with that. But then we have live score app, and that's what I'm going to use, but we'll come back to that. Now we're going to go to add digits and I got a bunch of these that I'm just going to delete because I'm doing something completely different. Um, the idea is we're trying to segment and separate certain areas of the scoreboard that's going to be captured so that you can actually um, convert that into text. 
So first, what we need to do is we're going to go here and define corners. We're going to clear it. And now what we want to do is we want to, let me move my camera a little bit. All right, so something like this. We want to define the area where our scoreboard is. So I'm going to click these corners here. Boom. And now, there we go. So let's zoom in a little bit. But we need to clean this up. So you have an option of inverting the colors. Um, and we want to play with the black levels. We want to get it clear enough to where you can read exactly what it is. Let's do high contrast. See, that might not work. Let's play with the white levels. And we want to play around to where we can get this legible. Because again, think scanner. All right. So everything can be read. This quarter is a little difficult to read. So you might want to you know, you can um, erode it or you can dilate it a little bit to give it some defined corners. You can pixelate it if you need to, to get it close. So you got to play around with this a little bit. You know, you can change the italicis where it's leaning. You want to get a good, clean picture as best as you can. And like I said, you could invert it to see if that will give you something better. I'm going to play around with that right there. Maybe high contrast will help. So maybe something like this. So here's an example. So now in live score, and let's go ahead and open that up. So we've got live score here. We're going to do basketball because that's what it is over here. So here's our app. And let's shrink it down here so we can have both side by side. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into input. And then there it is, scoreboard um, OCR. We're going to go set this up. And we're going to pick our sport. And this is where the port comes, comes in. So that's 80-80 by default. So in here, if we go back. This is where I set that local host. That means it's on the same system and we're looking at port 8080 and we're doing the format for live score. So now that we selected our sport and we have it enabled. Oh, wait a minute, I'm in the way. <laughs> now that we have it enabled um, here, we are they have certain name categories that we have to use when we designate what we're looking for. All right. So I'm going to see if I can. Keep this slid over here so we can look. So we have score away, score home, period, game clock. That's really the only thing that's on this scoreboard. So let's come back over here. Let's go to add digits. And now we want to start um, adding a field. So the first thing we're going to do is give it, we have to call it this name. So we're going to say score away. And this is going to be custom. Click OK. That's the format. And then we also have another field, score home. That's custom. We also have period. And that's also custom. And then we have game clock. Now, I'm, all of these are coming from the elements that Live Score app recognizes. Now, this is different because this is time. So we're going to select time. Because we have our minutes and seconds here. So we're going to OK that. All right. That's simple. Now, what we're going to do is let's start with our score away. Let's select that. And now we have these items shown up. And we can change this again if we needed to, the format. But it is going to be custom. You can ignore empty values. I don't think that's going to be an issue on this screen. Recognize delimiters. If you have that, you could. Um, and then remove digits after um, delimiter, we don't have that, so we don't have to worry. So we're going to do um, select automatic, and then we're going to draw a box around where the score is and make it big. If it's a high score, if it can go into three digits, give it enough room. And you see it is recognizing because of the clear image, it sees 18 and it translates that to 18. All right, let's do the same thing with the home score. 
All right, it's picking that up as well too. Period sometimes gives you an issue because of the font size. But it picked it up, so that's good. And then we got game clock. And boom, there it is. It was able to get everything. Now, what I'm going to do is unpause this video, and you'll see it should pick up everything and change the score while it goes live. As you can see, the clock is changing. But sometimes you see the numbers are going off, so you got to be kind of play around with that. Um, maybe the clock might not be as most accurate. Like right now, it's 4 minutes and 53 seconds, but it's <laughs> registering that as 49. Um, so we might want to come in here and play with those settings to refine it just a little bit more. But you want to hopefully not break anything else. See, it's picking up the last number, but it's missing that front one. So let's turn off high contrast. Does that help? No, it actually, see, it actually broke our other score. So I don't know why this picked up like that, but let's... Um, Get rid of that. And our numbers still are not showing up right. So we can click inside these fields and move them around. So, again, it's not perfect, but it will get you close to what you need. The main thing is the score and the quarter. But, again, you can play around with this, define this, and weed it out and do as much as you possibly can with it. Um, again, and if it doesn't work, we can come in here. Let's delete that whole game clock field, and let's try it again. Let's do add, and we'll do game clock. And maybe we'll do custom and see how that picks up. Now, you can also do one digit at a time if you want to. Now, of course, there's a commercial <laughs> here that's playing on this, and that's why I was trying to keep it still. All right, so we're back here and then picking it up. Now, all of a sudden, now it's not recognizing my away score. All right, there it goes. And then period. Yeah, I think because of the commercial, it kind of <laughs> started that off. You really wouldn't have a commercial like this. You would have this camera set dead on the... Um, scoreboard something like that all right so while we got that going let's try the game clock one more time and i'll say recognize delimiters on here and let's see can it get it this time no it's still getting the seconds but anyway you get the on the concept so now while it's doing this let's go back to our output and let's start sending some test data to live score and we're going to start our test and boom this is what's being sent over so this is the information so let's go ahead and save this and if we start a game let me reset it here and as you can see it's pulling from the score so I would turn off the items that I don't I'm not capturing files, times out, shot clock is not here, and maybe the time wouldn't be good. So at this point, I could have this score, and maybe actually let's change the scoreboard to make it um, a little simpler. So maybe something like this. And let's turn off all that other stuff here. So at this point, this will be good. I can have this pointed at the scoreboard, and as you can see, everything is showing up perfectly fine. And then let's turn on, um, do I have NDI on here? Yes, I do. 
So let's start up NDI. And if I'm capturing everything here in OBS, let me turn off this. And we're going to bring on live score over here. There we go. There's my scoreboard. Let's make it a little bit bigger. And as you can see, it without me changing anything, it is dynamically adding the score. Really, really cool. Now, if we were able to get it tweaked to where it was picking up the time, the time would be included in this. So as you can see, this is what's going on. 26, the Knicks, the 30 points for the Nets. And, of course, I would have that name over here um, and type that in. But that is how that works. You know, I have another capture card pointing directly at it. Now, if you really want to be a nerd and you're using the A to Mini, what you could do is set the HDMI out as the dedicated camera that's for the one that's pointing at the scoreboard and then have a second capture device, maybe like those $20 ones, into your computer, have the HDMI go in, and now you don't have to have two devices connected like that. But um, hopefully you'll be interested in that, and that was how we're going to be doing our games moving forward. Um, maybe I shouldn't have gave that away, but, hey, I like sharing with y'all anyway. And, hey, <laughs> I think that was kind of cool for the people who asked. So a um, link is in the description for all the stuff that we talked about. Um, I'm using the demo of it. Um, it is... Um, a subscription base is $350 um, US a year if you want to use this. But, um, hey, it's cool, um, especially if you're doing this and you have funding to actually do this. I mean, it pays for itself to give the interaction like that. But if you like this type of content, I appreciate it. Like, consider subscribing. Hit that bell. That way you get notified when we come out with other things and other videos to help modernize your media ministry or other cool stuff to help enhance your live streaming. So anyway, folks, this is AJ. We will see you on the next video. Later.